Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to I'm Making 3 and today I'm going to be giving you Part 4 of What If Naruto Was the Demigod of Fire, guys. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other What Ifs. I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Was a Half-Breed Uchiha, so go ahead, check out that and enjoy, guys. I also posted a brand new episode over on Anime Prince of what if Naruto was the fastest speedster in the multiverse so go ahead check out that and enjoy as well guys. Also if you're new don't forget to comment down below and tell me so I can respond and talk back to you personally and welcome you to the channel. And also don't forget to turn on the bell notification and see exactly when I post. So without further ado or wasting any more time what do you say we jump right into this guys begin now guys. So, the last part we left off, there was a battle commencing between Kakashi and Naruto at the moment. As Kakashi was proving himself to be a competent Jonin as Naruto was the one testing him, well that is what Naruto said. They clashed against one another as Kakashi found himself surprised. Granted he was not going all out on Naruto, he was surprised by Naruto's strength and overall power. Not to mention Naruto did not need to wield hand signs. This was the first in history Kakashi has ever seen someone able to perform techniques like this. The battle commenced as Sasuke was watching everything. Sasuke didn't remember what Kakashi said earlier as it made him realize something. As for down below Kakashi decided to put in a bit of work as he ended up delivering some serious blows to Naruto knocking him away. However, Naruto picked himself up like it was nothing as he told Kakashi that he should know one thing about him is that he never gave up as Naruto exploded with power. But Sasuke then jumped in. As Sasuke interrupted the fight, throwing a smoke bomb filling the air with smoke, Naruto was a pretty upset that he ruined his fighting moment. However, Sasuke told him that there was something he needed to tell him, and they need to find Sakura as well. So they went and find the pink hair Konoichi. Kakashi watched as he could feel their chakra converging. However, Naruto did not waste any time as he rushed through. He attacked Kakashi with gusto, as Kakashi found himself being attacked by Naruto until he saw Sasuke appear behind, the blonde. He was shocked. What the hell were they doing? He told Naruto to move. As Sasuke released a fireball that enveloped Naruto, his eyes widened in shock. Did he really just BAM? Naruto burst out of the flames, knocking Kakashi away. Kakashi was set off guard as Sakura threw explosive tags, making him switch as Naruto ended up slamming headfirst into him once again. Hitting Kakashi rather brutally, the Jonin substituted away but he was still in immense pain as he was shocked. As he saw Naruto got fried by the fireball yet he just came out to feel like it was nothing. He was surprised though when Naruto raised his hand as he was holding on to the bells. Kakashi would have tied him up to the post and reprimand them but they did it. They worked together without hesitation despite knowing that one of them would fail. Thus, he gave them the pass. As Naruto said that he was competent enough to be sensei, However, he will be taking notes of his work every now and then. As Kakashi wonder who was the student and who was the teacher here. As Naruto ended up leaving. Some weeks pass after that as Naruto had enough. The fire daimyo's cat, Tora, would never run away from Kanoha or her master ever again. As Naruto put the fear of Kami into the cat. As Naruto scared the cat so badly to run into his mother's arms, which he was always trying to get away from, but this time the cat was so scared, it was trembling in fear. The cat never ran away since this day ever again. Many future Jennings would be blessed and thank Naruto with everything they got. After all, they wouldn't have to deal with that demon cat anymore. Naruto wanted higher rank mission as he was not going to stand for these low class missions anymore. Hiruzen spoke to Kakashi as he allowed it. So with that he called in Tazuna, the bridge builder. As they all met up at the gate not too long later. Making their way, Sakura was asking about Land of Waif. 
when suddenly two ninjas burst from a puddle. They ripped Takashi apart. Sasuke went after one of them as Sasuke was able to knock him back and threw a kunai, but the guy knocked it away and came towards Sasuke with a poison claw. But before he could engage though, Naruto slammed a fist into the first one, sending him right into his brother, launching the both of them into the forest. He then jumped up in the air as he brought his hand down, but Kakashi stopped him, as he would like to find out who they were after. As Naruto shrugged him off as Kakashi came back, talking to Tezuna. However, the team wanted to go ahead. Kakashi obliged them as he believed that they would be strong enough to handle the foe ahead, and even if they were not, he was here. So with that, they kept on moving as Naruto ended up incinerating a rabbit that made noises in the bush. Before Sakura could screech at him though, a sword came flying over as Naruto caught it. The sword threw him back but Naruto showed that he was strong for his age and slammed said sword into the ground. Zabuza appeared as they started a battle. Kakashi was going to take Zabuza on but Naruto refused as he jumped forward. He started to battle Zabuza but the man was far out of Naruto league as he sliced Naruto. He ended up capturing Kakashi because... Well, Kakashi was trying to stop him from attacking Naruto. He used water clones to capture Kakashi but it was going to stop and they were going to run out of chakra in a few minutes so he had to end this fast. However, Naruto jumped forward until Zabuza knocked him in the water. Sasuke rushed forward as he attacked Zabuza. As Zabuza told him to give up, his friend was already dead. Sasuke simply smirked, his two totem showing in his eyes. If he believed that Naruto was dead, he was sadly mistaken. Fire erupted all over the place. The lake that Naruto had fell into completely incinerated as Naruto came walking out. He had a strange symbol on his forehead, a dot, with a strange orange symbol around it. A lot of orange markings running down his arms and legs. As Naruto attacked Zabuza as the sword started to crack. This time Naruto's were much stronger as Zabuza was still keeping up though. He was not an A-rank missing in for nothing but Naruto was getting hotter and hotter the place start to melt. The clones that was holding Kakashi quickly burst into smoke as Naruto's heat was being overwhelming to them. As Naruto was bringing and pulling and burning the air in the sky. Kakashi told him to stop as he will handle this. Kakashi didn't jump into the battle as he clashed against Zabuza. In the end he won but he was exhausted. The hunting didn't arrive and took Zabuza away. Kakashi fell over unconscious. The hunter didn't arrive towards the location and pulled the needs out. Zabuza was panting as he was angry about this dead life state but the hunter didn't have no other choice. While that was going on though, several people as they were speaking amongst one another one of them had felt it. They had felt Naruto's power and they were talking about someone else. It seems that Naruto being a reincarnation of someone from the past was drawing a lot of attention now since he awakened that strange new power with those markings all around his body. These people did not seem to like what they were hearing at all. How was he alive? Something had happened in the past. And it seems that the fiery spirit of that person that died would not rest. And at this moment, well, it was in Naruto. So that was immensely bad for who these people were, or maybe for Naruto, only time will tell. So yeah guys, basically let's play it off, you guys can switch across the playstation of yourself and don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over the other channels, yes, I do have 4 of them guys that post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy, so go ahead, destroy the red subscribe button and become a part of the making family, and thank you for all of your help and support, and yeah, without further ado, what do you say we jump right into this begin, now guys. We begin this episode with a flashback of the past, at an unknown time, a time that was outside of the elemental nation. Time flowed differently here so, it is unable to properly tell but, it was before even the Sage of Six Path, that was for certain. There was a man, his skin was red, like fire itself, like dying embers. He was shackled. However, these were no normal cuffs or chains that held him down. Glancing up, his body was not fully. Shown to the populace, he was kept in some sort of grip or some machine that held him, preventing him from stepping into the light source. In front of him, there was a few people, as they all looked down towards him. Despite this looking like an execution, the man simply laughed. He laughed so loud. As the whole place seemed to be trembling, just from his mere laughter, there was a reason why they had to secure him like this. They afraid of the prospect of him breaking out. You all will regret this, he shouted out. Death is not the end of me. I refuse to die, he shouted to them. 
I will return stronger, more powerful than ever, and I'll erase all of you into dust, he said. Mark my words, I will not die until my goal is complete. Do you hear me, he yelled. Up above, someone spoke a rough male voice. You seem to think that you can prevail even through death. Well, you're wrong. Just like those other fools. Here is where you will lay forever, the man said. He raised his hand and placed on a strange platform. The platform started to glow an ominous color. The man down below started to scream as the entire place light up. As there was a blinding light, up on the podium, there was a woman. As she hid her face, unable to look down fully toward the scene in front of her. You could see that she did not condone of what was going on. It was written all over her face. In the flashback, said woman was the one that was thinking about what just happened. She had long white hair, green eyes. Her body was covered in a white dress, slender, flowing down towards her feet. She was wearing nothing on the feet, no sandals, nothing at all, her feet was barren. She was currently in a forest, inside of Kanoha. She was watching someone. He was a child back then. It was none other than Naruto. As Naruto rapidly punched a tree in front of him, the more he punched the more, the tree started to break even more before he shattered it, causing the thing to fall. He then braced himself as he caught the gigantic thing that fell. He started to struggle. Naruto looked to be at least 8 years old at the moment. He then raised his hands up high before. Flames ignited the whole thing and set it ablaze. It wasn't too long before the whole thing turned to ash. Hell yeah, he shouted. The woman watched him with a smile. As she just watched him. He, it was truly him, she thought to herself. Naruto picked up something as he turned his head immediately. Her body became translucent. Like she wasn't even there. Naruto shrugged as he returned back to training. The woman quickly vanished away. In seconds, she was high up in the sky watching him down below. As her hair fluttered in the wind. It really is you, she said. There was a smile on her face. As she turned her head. If they find out that you're alive, especially that you're this weak. This time they won't kill you. They will lock you away. At this level that you're at, you won't be able to break free. And they will lock you away for eternity, she said. She watched him for a while, until he ended up falling asleep. She fluttered down. As Naruto was asleep, just lying there, out in the open. As they were in a rather dangerous forest, it was a forest of death. However, Naruto did not seem to care. He was just there asleep. That is when she noticed there was an animal, a bear to be exact, sneaking up on him. She raised her hand as the bear was sent flying away with a gust of wind that shooted towards the other end of the forest. She fluttered down towards the child as she reached her hand out and cursed his cheek. Just remain as you are, she said. If you stay like this, they won't ever be able to find you. Please, just enjoy your life, she said to him. Naruto's eyes snapped open, but in the fraction of his eyes opening, her body had become translucent once again, and she was gone, like the wind. Naruto picked himself up, scratching his cheek as he flipped to his feet. He then started to walk off, back to the present time. Kakashi slowly opened his eyes, as he wondered where he was. Wondering if they got back safely, he remembered a past note after being carried by Naruto. It did not take him too long to look around his own as he realized he was on a photon, in a room. Glancing to the left and right, he noticed the window was open up. He pulled himself up while he tried to. His body felt exhausted. He was in the Sharingan in a battle for a long period of time suck a lot of chakra out of him. Not to mention unlike normal Uchiha's he could not do what well they did. Deactivate the eye and also reactivate it, and that was his big problem. The door opened up as he looked. Kakash Sensei said Sakura, she rushed to his side. You're finally awake. How long have I been out, he said. A few hours, she said. Where are the others? Sasuke-kun is downstairs, but Naruto, 
He left. Can't guess you raised the eyebrow. What do you mean he left? He just went away. He wouldn't tell us where he was going. He said he had things to do. Kakashi tried to pick himself up, Sensei. You're still exhausted, you can't. When did he left, said Kakashi? A few hours ago. Sasuke insists that you'll be fine, but he hasn't been back since. Damn it, said Kakashi. He paused as he started to feel an unnatural heat. Sakura turned her gaze towards the window as she moved towards it. He's back, she said. Huh, good timing, I guess. Hey, Naruto, she said. As Naruto glanced up. Sensei's awake. Yeah, and what, said Naruto. I'm disappointed in his skills. He wasn't able to keep up with that missing name. So I don't really care, said Naruto as he walked away. In fact, heading into the house. Kakashi sighed. Given Naruto's attitude, somehow he already knew that something like this would happen. It didn't take long for the two boys to come upstairs. Sauce came too as well. So what do you have to say for yourself? Said Naruto as he looked towards Kakashi. What are you talking about? You disappointed me, said Naruto. I thought you were supposed to be one of the elites of Kanoha and yet. You still lost. If I'm not mistaken, I won the battle. Well, you passed out afterwards. What if we weren't there? Someone would have found you and killed you. Tch. Being so weak to pass out after one battle. I'm disappointed, said Naruto. And here I thought you were a good sensei. Kakashi pulled himself up in a sitting position. Sasuke spoke though. Kakashi, he said. Kakashi turned towards him. Something is bothering me. And what's that, Sasuke? The hunter name. The one that took the body away. I don't know much, so I don't know if I'm wrong, but... I've read up about what a hunter name is before. And aren't they supposed to remove the head of the body before leaving? Sakura turned towards him. She remembers something like that as well. A rather brutal position. But Kakashi looked towards him. You know, I was going to talk about that, he said. There is a good chance that Zabuza might not be dead. Yes, said Naruto in happiness. They turned towards him. Y you're happy, said Sakura. Of course I am. I didn't get my chance to fight him. Well, if he is alive, you won't be fighting him. What, said Naruto. Zabuza was toying with you at first. He was? Naruto said, raise an eyebrow. Yes, that was until you did whatever you did and got a whole lot stronger. And you actually caused him pain and wound him. I saw the look in his eyes. He was going to kill you. You're strong, Naruto, but... Zabuza is an A-rank missing ninja. I will be the one dealing with him. Tch, in your condition, you can't even deal with a fly right now, said Naruto. I'll recover, said Kakashi. However, that begs the question. We now know that Zabuza is working with an accomplice. You guys will have to deal with the accomplice while I take Zabuza down. Tch, fine, said Naruto. But if you shit the bed again and lose to Zabuza... I'll be the one to finish him off, said Naruto. Well, if that happens again, you have my go-ahead to do so. But Sensei, said Sakura. Don't worry, Sakura. This time, I'll finish him off, said Kakashi. Until then, though, I have to train you guys to prepare for the fight. You know that I'm thinking about it now. Have you trained us, said Naruto. What do you mean, said Kakashi? I had you guys working on teamwork, said Naruto, cutting him off. But what have you taught us? Sasuke narrowed his gaze. He hadn't said anything about that because he had a few scrolls to go over himself that Naruto had taken from the library. From the Jonin section that he should not go into. But he was not one to complain when it was benefiting him. We've been a team for a short amount of time now, said Kakashi. And said Naruto. Is that any excuse? Tell me. What will you teach us and is it something important? Oh trust me, said Kakashi. It will help you guys in the long run. But I'm gonna need a day, he said. Tch, your weakness once again get in your way, said Naruto. You better shape up otherwise. I'll remove you as Team 7 Sensei. Kakashi is an eyebrow. And how exactly you think you can do that? Have you forgotten or something? I'm the one in charge here. Keep on acting this way and you won't be for too long. Are you threatening me, said Kakashi. Take it however you like, said Naruto. But I don't like to have my time wasted. 
And at this moment, you're really starting to disappoint me, said Naruto as he walked off. He should really show you some more respect, said Sakura as she watched Naruto leave, speaking up after he left. But Sasuke simply left as well. Kakashi simply sighed. His student had no respect for him. But given Naruto's attitude, he was seeing him as someone weak. Kakashi ought to remind him soon enough that he was one of the elites of Kanoha. And Sakura just wanted to get Naruto in trouble. As Naruto was walking on, Sasuke followed behind him. Hey, he said stopping him. Huh? What's wrong with you now, said Naruto. I told you that we were going to speak about what you did earlier. What are you talking about? That whole thing with you erasing the leak. Ah, that, said Naruto. I've never felt so much power coursing through me before. It was like I was a blazing inferno about to explode with rage and more power. The more I fought, the stronger I get. If Kakashi hadn't gotten my way, I would have defeated Zabuza. If you haven't forgotten, Zabuza is an A rank missing in. We are still, you are a kid, said Naruto, cutting him off before he can say anything. I am much stronger than you and anyone else in our class. I have shown to be growing stronger and stronger by the day. And soon enough, I will show you all, said Naruto, that I am indeed the greatest. You know, sometimes being a bit too cocky won't really help, said Sasuke. I'm not being cocky, said Naruto, I'm merely stating a fact. Now, leave me be. I have things to do. Where were you anyway, Sasuke said. You left. I visited a nearby lake, said Naruto. For what? For my important special training. Your important special training? And what would that be? Naruto hurled a fireball straight towards Sasuke's face, forcing Sasuke to duck underneath it. As Sasuke snapped his head back up, You asked too much questions, said Naruto as he walked off. Sasuke sighed as he watched Naruto left. Sometimes he wonder, how the hell are they friends? As he simply made his way back inside to find out exactly what Kakashi has to teach them. Meanwhile, at Konoha, Uncle Midorashi groaned in bed. As her eyes fluttered open, granted she wasn't alone. As the person's eyes over to the other side opened as well. And it was none other than Kimiko. Yes, Kimiko. Naruto finances. Dealer. The person that handles his money. And with the buildings that he owned. The manager. Yes, it was a rather awkward situation for the both of them being here at the moment. Granted, Uncle swing both ways. And it seems like so did Kimiko. But how did this happen? Well, Kimiko said. That was amazing, Uncle said, finishing for her. Yes, but this is, I mean, I am Naruto's. Come on, don't get too much thinking about it, Uncle said. It's not like we're doing this for anything more than pleasure. You came by to drop off those receipts. And well, I was really horny, Uncle said. And I guess I couldn't control myself. And when I started to make my move well, you fell for it like a fish for a hook. Hey, it wasn't like that. Really? Uncle said. Alright, fine, said Kimiko. Can we not tell Naruto about this? Well, I would prefer not to as well. Given him, he would try to blow this out of proportion or, well, he's gonna use it to somehow piss me off. Well then, said Kimiko. As long as he won't find out. We can continue, right? Until he returns. Well, he's on a long-term mission right now, Uncle said. As she straddled over Kimiko and leaned and kissed her. So I don't see why not. As Kimiko giggled. Well, that was a certain situation that was taking place at the moment. The next day, Kakashi was on crutches as he made his way out. Alright, he said. I'm going to teach you guys how to... Walk on trees. Kakashi had to duck as a tree behind him was incinerated. What the hell, he said as he got back up. His body was already in pain. It was a good thing he had quick reflexes. I told you not to waste my time. What is this rubbish that you're talking about, said Naruto. Walking on trees? How in the hell would that ever help us? Well, if you stop attacking your sensei wish, it's something clearly forbidden if I haven't told you. At least a million times now, I would explain. Fine, said Naruto. 
Now, said Kakashi as I was saying, he then proceeded to walk up the tree. So this is what she was talking about. Huh? Said Sakura as she turned towards Sasuke. Someone I know. Uncle. She told us about tree and water walking, that we would learn it from her sensei. I was wondering what was taking you so long. Well, wait, who is uncle, Sakura said, looking towards Sasuke. A friend of mine and Ruta's. She lived with him. Wait, you live with her? Is she your family? Are you deaf? He just said friend, said Naruto, looking towards Sakura. Oh, I see. You think that Sasuke might be like her, and you're jealous. Well, he surely picked that up fast. What? I, I don't know what you're talking about, Sasuke said. I just never seen this uncle person before. Trust me, you don't want to see her, said Kakashi. You know her as well, Sensei? Yes. She's a special joni in Uncle Midorashi. If you see her, you will understand. Well, Naruto behavior is probably calmer than any others. You're telling me that she's worse? In between, said Kakashi. Yes, she's a crazy violent person. Said Naruto with a smile. You know those aren't good words, right? Said Sakura. To you, said Naruto, but to me, they are. Now, how does this stupid thing work? Well, said Kakashi. You have to balance chakra on the sole of your feet. Too little and you will slip off too much. And you will end up... BOOM! The tree bark exploded. That, said Kakashi, as he chuckled to himself. Is this funny to you, said Naruto, as he was lying on the ground. Yes, when you don't listen and you get hurt. It is funny to me. However, I've been wondering about something. There's a chance that you might never able to do this. Or you might never be able to walk on water, ever. What are you talking about? I figured that uncle figured that out as well, that is why. She never taught you guys how to do this. Seeing that she wouldn't want Naruto to feel bad if she taught Sasuke. Why? Why wouldn't he be able to do this? Sasuke, use your Sharingan. As Sasuke activated his eyes and what said Sasuke, Naruto, I want you to send chakra to your feet. Naruto did what he was told. What do you see? It's like... His chakra is about to explode. Yes, that's what I mean. Your chakra is vile and unpredictable and also hot. And to a certain extent explosives. Your heat is not any normal heat. I've never seen a ninja through the elemental nation able to do something like this before. You're one of the first. So I doubt that your chakra will be calm enough to do certain things. Granted. You don't have any ninjutsu, do you? No, said Naruto. And I don't think that you can even learn any. If it wasn't for your fire-based attacks, you wouldn't have any sort of abilities known. However, you can convert almost any ability that you see or watch into your fire type. But certain things like tree walking and water walking might be out of the range of possibility for you because of your chakra being so chaotic and hot. Tuh, said Naruto. I'll do this. I just explained. Yeah, you can take that explanation and shove it, said Naruto. I'll be back soon, said Naruto as he started to walk off. Where are you going, said Kakashi? I'm going to find a way to do this and prove you wrong. I told you before, I never give up and I never quit on what I'm doing. And I'll succeed no matter what. Even if the gods are against me, it will not stop me to accomplish what I want. As Sasuke just shook his head before he walked up the tree. Kakashi blinked in surprise. How did you... I saw the amount of chakra you placed on your feet while you were doing the exercise. I simply copied it, said Sasuke. Well, the Sharingan is a useful tool. Now try to make it all the way up. Sasuke started to take a few more steps until he accidentally lost control. Well, I guess it's not that perfect. Hey Sensei, glad Snub Sakura's already sitting on the high branch. I did it. I expect nothing less, Sakura. Given your small amount of chakra, it's easier to control. Now we have to work on raising your chakra levels. Time skip. In the forest, at least a dozen trees were burned to crypts. Several others broken. Naruto smashed his fist in the ground, shattering it. Why isn't this working? He said angrily. 
He's been at this for hours now and yet he still cannot do the damn thing. And it's beginning to piss him off really really badly. Hello there. Why are you so angry? Naruto turned his head as he saw someone standing there. It was a woman. She was in a white dress. She looked to be a couple years older than him. Her face looked angelic. Her features were unblemished and, well, she was cute. Long white hair. She also had green eyes that just seemed to somehow captivate Naruto as he looked at them. He didn't know why but this woman seemed familiar to him. Do I know you? said Naruto. I don't think so, she said. I've never met you before, she said. Who are you then? said Naruto. Oh, you can call me Lily. Lily? That's a really odd name. I've never heard a name like that in the Elemental Nation before. Well, it's my name. As Naruto simply shrugged. So what do you want, Lily? said Naruto. As you can see, I'm busy. You're rather rude, aren't you? she said. Is that any way to talk to a woman? I don't give a damn about your gender, said Naruto. I just don't really care about people that I don't know. So what do you want? he asked. Well, I was just passing by. Your fire caught my attention. Oh, it did, said Naruto. Well, you should be honored. My fire is special. You're all so prideful as well, she said, as she stepped forward. Naruto raised the eyebrow. Why are you stepping so close to me? <laughs> a distrustful child, aren't you? Of course not, said Naruto. I just don't know you. And I don't know why you're stepping so close to me. Well, you have nothing to fear. I'm not here to harm you. But may I ask, what are you doing? Now why would I tell you that, said Naruto. As you must have noticed, I'm a ninja. Judging from my headband. So why would I go and tell you anything? S let's state one more fact once again. I don't know you. Hmm. And you say that you're not distrustful. Are you crazy? Said Naruto. What? Of course not, she said. Why would you say that? Because you're saying things like you don't understand. The world that we live in. And how evil people truly are. Trusting people you don't know would get you killed. And... It might seem that way, but I'm not stupid, said Naruto. Hmm. I guess you're right. Trusting people like that would indeed get you killed. But I'm someone you can trust. Oh, and I'm supposed to believe you by your words, Lily, said Naruto. Hmm. I guess you're right, she said. As you can see, I'm not any of these ninjas that you call yourself, as she showed him her back in hands as she wasn't wearing any weapons or anything on her. I'm completely clean. Yes, but I don't care, said Naruto. Now can you leave? <laughs> she chuckled to herself. I see, said Naruto. What do you see? You're crazy, said Naruto. You laugh for no reason and you talk and act like you have no brain in your head. Well, I guess if you're stupid it doesn't matter. Right, which at that. I'm training to learn how to walk up these trees. But I'm frustrated because I can't do it. <laughs> I guess you really suck then. What? said Naruto. Well, you suck at doing what you're trying to do. Tch. <laughs> bitch, said Naruto. What do you call me? I said you're a bitch. Are you deaf? said Naruto. As she just glared at him. Naruto picked himself up. What? You want to fight me? Unfortunately, no I don't, she said. Although I would like to shut that potty mouth of yours. Potty mouth, said Naruto. Hm, you are a bitch. Her eyes started to twitch as Naruto looked at her. Why don't I help you, she said. To prove that I'm not a bitch as you say. Help me. How would someone like you help me? Wait, are you talking about sex? Or your prostitute, said Naruto. Wandering around and offering your services to men. No, no, of course not, she said. Oh. Then what would you do for me, said Naruto. Well, I've noticed that you possess unnatural heat. And how do you know that? Let's just say, I have special eyes, she said as her eyes glow green. Wow, said Naruto in a sarcastic wow. So what? How are you going to help me? Well, if you behave and act properly, I might be able to tell you how to bypass your little problem. You know, said Naruto. Tell me now. Act nicely. Why? 
you're the one offering something. I'd rather not take handles from anyone. But if you don't want to tell me, go ahead and leave me alone, said Naruto. Tch, you're really stubborn. Even worse than before. What was that? Oh, nothing, she said. I'm just gonna tell you anyways. Fine, if you want to, that's your fault. I didn't ask for it. But you're listening, though, she said. Ask Naruto yawn. What? Wouldn't it be a lot better for you to just levitate rather than walking up trees? Levitate? You mean flying? More or less, she said. The two are different, how? Levitate is going up, flying is going up. Levitate is staying up for a while. Flying is guiding through the sky, she said. However, there's a possibility you can do both. What? And how do you know this? said Naruto. Why don't you just give it a try, she said. Try to focus the ink you have at the bottom of your feet. However, instead of coming out and burning everything, try to make it docile and calm. And control it to control your movements. And if you want to go faster, maybe ignite it like a explosion. Naruto looked down towards his feet. How do you know that something like this might work? She was gone. What the hell? said Naruto looking around. Oh, I see, said Naruto. I was talking to a ghost. Yes, that was the only explanation. The person must have died and was wandering in the woods. That is why he didn't sense that she was coming. Yes, he was talking to a ghost. Up in the sky. She chuckled to herself. <laughs> He's a lot worse than before, she said. I have no choice. She brought her hands together. Naruto looked around as the breeze started to increase. A violent gust spread through the area. However, Naruto stood his grounds. Unknown to him, a hand emerged behind him. Without him even sensing or feeling anything, he was just unable to feel it. The hand was made out of nothing but air. Reaching out, a green spiral left the hand and slowly attached itself to Naruto's back and vanished. With that, the woman completely erased herself once again. Now, said Naruto, he blasted off the ground with the flames, leaving the ground scorched and destroyed, as he ended up crashing face first into a tree. Maybe a bit too much, said Naruto. Later that night, finally made it back, did you, said Kakashi? Yes, and I will be successful eventually, said Naruto. And how far have you reached? When I've done it, I will tell you, said Naruto. You know, admitting that you can't, it's not a bad thing. And being quiet, it's not a bad thing either, said Naruto. You know, you are to show me respect, I am your sensei, right? When you defeat Sabuza without collapsing unconscious, I'll show you the proper respect that you deserve. Elite of Kanoha, said Naruto. Kakashi eye twitch at that. Tsunami smiled at all of them. You all seem to have trained a extra hard today, she said. So just sit down and relax, she said. Food is coming up right away. Naruto glanced towards Sasuke. And how was your training, he said. You're not going to tell me what you did out there, Sasuke asked. No, said Naruto. So why should I tell you what I did out there either? Because I asked. And I demanded, said Naruto. And what makes you think you can demand anything of me? Because I'm Naruto, said Naruto. And Sasuke asked. Tch. Believing that he's entitled for anything, Sakura said. Naruto turned towards her. Did you open your mouth and say something a moment ago? And what if I did? I'll slap you, said Naruto. What? You wouldn't dare, she said. Oh, I wouldn't, said Naruto. Naruto, that's enough, said Kakashi. Tch, said Naruto as he turned his head. As Nami placed a meal in front of him. You seem to be extra hungry, she said. Why don't you eat up and quell that attitude of yours? They all expected Naruto to blow up at her, but he did not. I like you, said Naruto, as he started to eat. Well, that was surprising, they thought to himself. Don't get any big ideas, said Tazuna. As Naruto glanced towards him, that's my daughter, he said to him. Naruto tilted his head towards the man that was drinking some sake. I like you as well, said Naruto. However, you, he looked towards Inari. I don't like you. As the child looked up surprised that he was talking to him. You don't even know him, said Sakura. Yes, but I don't like him. Just so I don't like you. 
Well, I don't like you either, she said. Yes, and I don't care, said Naruto. And do you think I care if you don't like me? Well, you're still talking about it, aren't you, said Naruto. Tch, she said looking away. It doesn't matter if you like me or not, said Neri. You're all going to die. Naruto raised the eyebrow. Are you going to kill me, he asked. No. Got to wish. You have no idea what you've walked into. Inyeri! No, said Inyeri, looking towards mother. They need to know that you're forfeiting your life. There is no point. Tezuna lowered his head as Kakashi noticed that. Sasuke noticed as well. What are you talking about, child? said Naruto. Well, it's quite simple. Gato is going to kill you all. You've been living in a cozy village your entire life, believe in that. There is nothing out there that can harm you. Just because you're ninjas, but everyone will fail and lose to Gato. You think Gato will defeat me, said Naruto. Let me get this straight. The short man that your grandfather told us about. The short pludgy man that has money but no skills. Yes, he's too powerful. Oh, I see, said Naruto. You're stupid. What, said Inyuri? As the other sweat drop. Yes, you must be stupid. If you think that lousy old piece of crap can defeat someone like me, said Naruto, as he banged his hand on the table. You have no idea what I'm capable of. You have no idea the power I possess. So before you go and run your mouth, get to know who you're talking to, said Naruto. I'm undefeatable. And I'll burn this god of yours into dust. You piss me off, said Naruto as he jumped over the table. Kakashi got up thinking that Naruto would do something stupid as Naruto picked the boy out by the back of his shirt. Go to your room. Let go of me, said Inyuri. I said go to your room, said Naruto. You're in a timeout. You think I'm some kind of child that you can send to his room? Naruto slammed the door as Inyuri banged on the door. Shut up and be quiet, said Naruto as he came back downstairs. Everyone sweat drop. Annoying child, said Naruto as he went back to his seat. Don't worry, said Naruto as he looked towards Nami. By the time we're leaving this place, I'll make sure that he doesn't behave like that again. I apologize for Inyuri's behavior, but I will not allow you to hurt my son, she said to him. Oh, hurt him? Oh, I won't do that, said Naruto. He's just a stupid child after all. I was once a stupid child as well. Once, Sasuke said, making Sakura laugh. As Naruto simply returned back to eating, confusing them. Huh. I'm surprised you didn't attack him. Tetsuna said as he seen Naruto behaviors and the way he act when Sasuke said something about him. Oh, he's gonna get what is coming to him, said Naruto. However, as you can see, I'm hungry, said Naruto. Oh yeah, guess what? I made a ghost today. Y you what? Said Tsunami. Yeah, a ghost in the forest. She must have died some time ago. He you're joking, right? Said Sakura. Nope. She was talking to me and acting friendly. And I think she might be a crazy ghost. And where do you meet this ghost? Said Kakashi. Oh, you're stupid too. Because I'm sure I just said in the forest. Where exactly, Kakashi said. A few meters from where you guys were training. And how do you know that she was a ghost? Because after she told me something, she vanished. Are you sure that you weren't sleeping? Yes, I'm sure I wasn't sleeping, said Naruto. I would know a dream different from reality. Oh really, Sasuke said. Shut your mouth, said Naruto. Tell us, Sasuke, said Sakura. Well, he woke up one day. And he had a dream that he was being attacked by these aliens with strange powers. And he spent the better half of that day believing that it was reality and they somehow wiped his memories and locked him away. So he spent the better part of that day searching for these aliens. And yet you call people stupid. I told you that was real, said Naruto. I saw them. They had water. They had earth and different things. And they hunted me down and we fought. Yeah, because that wasn't a dream. As Sakura started to laugh, and you had the galls to call people stupid. Naruto picked up his plate as he walked out. Where are you going, said Kakashi? I'm afraid if I stay in here for too long, I'm going to start slapping people, said Naruto. So it's best if I leave. As he went outside to eat. Later that night, Sasuke was passing by the door. Crying was coming from inside. As he knocked on the door, go away, said Inyari. Sasuke opened the door the same way though. 
I just want to talk, he said to him, as Inuri looked up. Time skip. The week fly by rather quickly. Jewin said we Kekashi. Test all of them on their affinities. Sasuke had fire and I think for lightning as well that was rather surprising given his age. Sakura had that affinity for earth and Naruto's prime affinity was fire. The moment he touched the paper it just exploded into flames. Kakashi had gave them each a jutsu to try and learn before the week was up. Sasuke had fallen back on his as he had mastered the tree walking and he was also practicing walker walking in secret to see if he can get on his own but he was failing miserably. Water walking was a whole lot different from tree walking. So Sasuke ended up wearing himself out by the last day. That is why the team allow him to sleep. Sasuke woke up as he heard talking outside. Glancing through the window, Sasuke looked down to see two men. As it wasn't talking that he heard, it was shouting. He saw it in hearing. Let go of my mother, he said. Sasuke quickly pulled himself out of bed, realizing that the others weren't here. He then noticed a note. But he didn't have time to look at it. If he had looked, he would have read. Sasuke Kun. The rest of us are going to protect the bridge. While you stay up here and rest. We'll see you soon. Your teammate and close friend, Sakura Haruno. There were several markings on the note where she had rubbed out. Your teammate and lover, and instead she write teammate and friend. She didn't want to be too pushy just yet. Well, it was not like they were anything of the sorts. Her mind just went a bit overboard sometimes. Whenever it came to Sasuke, her mind always go overboard, and she couldn't help it one bit. Sasuke jumped down. Before Inir could be sliced by the bandits, he was replaced with a log. What the hell? Glancing up the bandits saw Inir being held by Sasuke, as he looked down towards him with a snarl. Huh, who the hell is this brat? Meanwhile, on the bridge, Naruto was stuck in an ice dome. Things had went to hell so fast. They had appeared in the bridge. Tazuna found some of his workers had run away. And then they saw the fog. It didn't take long for Zabuza to show himself with his apprentice. Quickly Socrates guard in front of Tazuna. While Naruto took on the apprentice he did not even wait. Haku, the apprentice name was. Haku features were unavailable seeing that he was wearing a mask. While Naruto called him a he. Despite not knowing exactly what gender he was, he did not really care about that. As Naruto attacked him, Haku was surprised. He expected to overpower this blonde or redhead or orange here. Well, it was just strange. There was so much mixtures in there. However, Haku never expected him to be this fast or strong. Haku had to quickly use his most powerful jutsu and capture Naruto at the moment. Naruto looked around. As clashing could be heard on the other side versus the two powerhouses. What is this? said Naruto. Where are you? Haku appeared in the mirror in front of Naruto. I'm afraid this will be where you have your last breath. Have my last breath? Are you saying that you're gonna kill me? said Naruto. Unfortunately, yes. Although I wish I didn't have to. I have to make sure. You do not harm Zabuza-sama. Zabuza-sama. Yes, I really wanted to fight him, but my sensei is going to kill him, said Naruto. I'm afraid I cannot allow that to happen. I will stop you. Huh. You think these mirrors can hold me? Said Naruto as he felt the coldness coming from them. I saw how you fight in the first time. You mostly consist of fire. That means you stand no chance against me. I am your worst opponent. Naruto felt something stab him as he looked. Two needles stab him right in the arm. And my speed. I will show you what I can truly do when I'm serious. Another two needles stab him in the other arm. As Naruto was then assaulted by needles all around. Haku did not hesitate as he flew from the mirror and slapped. Two needles right in Naruto's chest. Appearing behind Naruto he sliced him with an ice dagger. As Naruto collapsed. Haku will materialize in front of Naruto raw speed. As I said before, this will be where you take your final breath. There is no doubt that your intention is to kill Zabuza-sama despite what will happen today. I saw it in your eyes. That sensation of death. And I will not allow it. You know, 
you talk too much. Haku was shocked. He quickly jumped back into his mirror. How are you standing? Because I refuse to kneel to someone like you. Or to even lower my head in someone as weak as you. Presence. You fool. You should have just stayed down. Now, I end this. Haku appeared all over and launched. Naruto was hit violently. He was like a porcupine. It's over, Haku said. As Naruto steadied himself. Surprising Haku. <laughs> it seems like you're deaf or something. I will not be bowing to someone like you. Flames exploded from Naruto melting the needles that were stuck inside of him as a holes started slowly close. As Naruto hand created a ball of fire as he launched it, it crashed into the mirror but there wasn't even a scratch. There's no point. Your flames cannot burst through my mirror, Haku said as Naruto kept on hitting and hitting and hitting. However, the flames were not doing anything. Are you deaf, Haku said. Why waste your energy? Knowing that you will still lose, your flames are not hot enough. The seal that the woman placed on Naruto's back started to glow green. Instantly she appeared. Damn it, she said. That shouldn't be possible. As Naruto started to laugh. And who decided that, he said. Haku looked at him strangely. I did. You cannot win. I am your worst opponent. With my elements. I don't care, said Naruto, cutting him off. I told you before. You cannot decide that because... I'm the one that decides what is going on here, said Naruto. And you, you cannot, as Naruto roared. It sounded like a bellowing dragon as the seal on his back exploded orange embers flickering off his skin. Now, let me show you how hot my flame is. The mirror started to melt as Naruto blurred away. Bam! Haku was shocked as the mirror shattered. However, not just that. Bam, 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 bam. Naruto was moving like a blur. Flames were exploding from his feet, allowing him to fly upwards and shatter every mirror. This all happened in a few seconds. Haku was speechless as he leaped forward. Seeing that Naruto was going towards one of his mirrors, he turned. However, Naruto snapped his head towards him and launched his fist. Haku quickly brought his arms up. However, the flames slammed right into him, breaking him through his own mirror with tremendous force. He crashed on the bridge. The mask on his face was badly burnt. His arms were burnt as well. Haku picked himself up. How? He said in absolute shock, unable to understand. How was this even possible? I told you before. No one decide my fate but me, said Naruto. He roared once again, releasing obscene amount of flames before. He shot forward. Haku dodged out of the way though. He brought his hand down to incapacitate Naruto by jamming him right in the neck. However, the balls of Naruto's feet. Well, he was no longer wearing sandals since they already exploded. Now the balls of Naruto's feet envelop in flames, Naruto used it to propel himself out of the way. Haku was not prepared for this kind of speed, so when Naruto turned and brought his foot down and crashed it on Haku's shoulder, the bridge even trembled a bit at the section they were. As Haku cried out in pain, but Naruto was not done as he brought his other foot up. The kick that he sent towards the mask shattered it instantly. Blasting Haku straight up in the air as Naruto was on the ground. Watching Haku before he held out his hands to his side. Let's see you try this on for size. Raging Inferno Naruto yelled. World ending flames as Naruto opened his mouth. Haku's eyes widened. He tried to enter one. Off his mirror's butts. He wasn't fully able to do so. When he reappeared on top of the bridge, his left arm and left leg was so badly burned that he could not stand up. He lied there a broken mess. As Naruto hobbled over towards him, you, you defeated me. And now I'm nothing but a broken tool and I have to die, said Naruto as he dropped his hands. Haku's head was incinerated as Naruto blasted to nothingness. The woman who was known as Lily was in mid-ear. Clench her fists. You always have to be so damn stubborn. Why couldn't you just stay as you were, she said angrily. The embers that were flickering around Naruto slowly dissipated. 
and you've already reached that level. And just like before, you will shatter all of them until you reach your peak, or maybe even greater. I can sense dormant power inside of you, even different from your own. If those two got combined, tell me they will find you, she said. But she couldn't tell him, because it was a chance if she told him, he would remember his past life. It could trigger memories and cause him to return back to the state that he was. And, no, she she did, she did, couldn't. It would just start another problem for, not just them, but the entire way of living on all the planets. She couldn't. She just had to do something. The prospect of ending him would stop everything, but she couldn't. The last time this, she shook her head before she flew off. Making her way back to where she came from. On the bridge, Kakashi's hand was protruding right through Zabuza. As he pulled it back, Zabuza dropped face first. Naruto walked over towards him as he was looking at Kakashi. Where is your opponent? Kakashi said. Oh, he's dead, said Naruto. And I see that you defeated Zabuza. You look a bit tired, but at least you're still on your feet and not unconscious. So I guess you're not that worse as a sensei, said Naruto. As Naruto turned his gaze, What now, said Kakashi. I'm impressed. You are some powerful Kanoha ninjas. However, it's about time that I finish all of this little mess. What do you guys say? As cheers could be heard behind this short fat man that was on the bridge. Who is this, said Naruto. You describing yourself the other night. Can't you guess who it is? Said Kakashi. Ah, said Naruto. That's Gato. Huh. You look worse than I thought, said Naruto. What was that, you little brat? I said you look worse than I thought. You're short, weak and pathetic. Gato clenches cane. You have no idea who you're talking to, do you? Are you not hearing me, said Naruto. I just said your name. Boys, as they stepped off, showing that it was more of them than the Konoha ninjas thought. However, an arrow landed in front of Naruto between them and the missing ninjas. Glancing upwards, the people of Wave were all gathered. What did I miss, Sasuke said. Sasuke can sit soccer, you're here. You, Kazuna glanced up. Did you gather them all? I'm afraid that wasn't me. It was your grandson. Wait. He gather them? Tch. You people still have the will to fight even after. I broke you, said Gato. We will not stand for your reign of tyranny anymore. We will fight back no matter what, in here, said. Tch. Tough talk for my brat. However, it doesn't matter. Boys, annihilate them all. It's time I take full control over this country. Gato, you bastard, said Tazuna. Start with him first. The missing ninja start to step forward as Naruto picked up Zabuza's blade. Holding the blade in his hand, it started to glow red. As Naruto's hand was also glowing red as well. As he seemed to be sending his power into the blade. Huh, it's really working. What are you doing, said Kakashi? I learned some things about myself while training, said Naruto. My fire has a lot of other uses. Other than just burning things. Well, that is a main use. But I can do things like this, said Naruto. Naruto was somehow able to keep the metal from melting in the blade. While sending an obscene amount of power towards it. Now, said Naruto. As he raised the blade before, bring it down towards the left. Supernova. Combustion, he said as he swung the blade. Releasing flames that seems different. As Kakashi could feel the heat but somehow Naruto's body was preventing the heat from harming them. Now Kakashi was certain that Naruto flames were not natural or normal in the slightest. Naruto was manipulating the flames in a strange way that he didn't even have the full grasp of control over yet. The arc that rushed towards the people, it seemed to swallow them. There was no screams, nothing. Their bodies were just swallowed in it, burning them away. As everyone was shocked up above. Once Naruto stopped though, the blade in his hand completely disintegrated. 
into nothingness. Huh. I guess I don't fully have that under control. Suck her eyes widen in shock. Where, where did they go? She said. As she just couldn't wrap her mind around that, Naruto just incinerated all of them with a slice. Naruto then proceeded to stagger back as Kakashi was about to catch him, but he raised his arm, stopping Kakashi. I'm fine. I told you this before, but it's alright to lean on your teammates for help, especially your sensei. And I told you I'm fine, said Naruto, as he stood on his feet. It was my first time doing that, I guess. I wasn't prepared for the amount I had to use. But as you can see, I'm still kicking, said Naruto. I refuse to fall, ever. That is my code and that is my way, said Naruto as he marched off the bridge, leaving everyone there shock. They're all gone. The people start to celebrate. Many of them calling out Naruto's name after hearing Inere say his name. And Tsunami as well. He did introduce himself. Their hero. Their hero just annihilated Gato and everyone that came with him. They couldn't believe it. However, Kakashi noticed that Naruto was still standing there. He had stopped after walking off. Kakashi moved towards him. What? Basking in the glory, he said. However, Naruto did not respond as Sakura saw his face. Um, Sensei? He's asleep. What do you mean asleep? He's standing right... Kakashi blinked in confusion. He's really asleep, Sasuke said. Naruto was standing up as he had fallen unconscious or asleep somehow. As he wasn't really having his eyes open. He was breathing. But it seems like whatever he did a moment ago, that he got a supernova attack. Took a lot more out of him than expected. However, the scary thing was, Kakashi had noticed the flames did not stop. Even after going over the water, they went straight out. He was sure that they dissipated after a time, but still. Just what exactly are the limits? And what exactly can Naruto do with those flames of his? Naruto blinked as he found himself in a strange sewer. As he wondered what happened to him a moment he was walking, feeling a bit uneasy. I know he wasn't here. Naruto felt something. A fiery hot spirit. That made his stomach bubble with excitement as he made his way down the hall until he arrived. The gigantic bars. Two eyes slowly open up. Ah, I see. So my jailer has finally said to pay me a visit. Naruto's eyes widen. Nine tails, he said. But guys, me and subscribe right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Bye, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.